Apple's iCloud has just been released for iOS and OS X. Ever since it's been introduced, a couple of folks seem to have problems getting the iCloud. For them, iCloud is this ominous thing somewhere where they save stuff to, but they really don't know for sure whether they save data on the server, a hard disk, or on their own disks, and what apps on the iPhone do with iCloud. Back in June 2011, Steve used to advertise for it with the words, it just works. In fact, he didn't have any other words for it. He just kept repeating these three words, it just works. He further explained that many people think the iCloud is just a hard disk in the sky. But that's really not the case. iCloud isn't merely a hard drive, it's a collection of services running on Apple's servers that you can connect to. In this screencast we're going to take a look at what the iCloud really is, so that you can understand it better. Please keep in mind though, that we're not Apple, and some of this information might not be as correct as shown. This is our try to explain iCloud, so users have more confidence in this system, and hopefully we can resolve some confusion. This also means that if you have a problem with iCloud in any way, we're not responsible for product support. If you have an issue with iCloud, or at worst, lost all your data, talk to Apple. They are the only ones who are able to help you. We also recommend backing up your system prior to activating iCloud on your Mac or an iDevice. So, what is iCloud? We're going to take a look at two apps that communicate with iCloud. iCloud is a web service that your devices connect to and upload or download data from. Local data is only a copy of the cloud data. We can see how this works when we go to iCal or address book in the preferences. In iCal we have a new account labeled iCloud where it says below CalDev. CalDev is a web server, essentially a program, that runs on the iCloud server, which is responsible for taking and sending changes to calendar files and keeping those in sync across multiple devices. Addressbook uses a similar technology named CardDev. It's essentially the same thing, but for contacts. We're going to use iCal here as main example. Things shown here are essentially the same and only minimally different for Addressbook. What these servers do is really easy to understand. Once you have created your iCloud account and everything set up, OS X in this case, connects to that server and now every change you make is first saved locally and then uploaded to the iCloud, the master brain. It's like connecting to a Facebook account or your email. Without logging into Facebook, you don't have access to your Facebook friends and groups. Without logging into iCloud, you can see your iCloud calendars. I'd say you have the most direct connection to the iCloud server when you visit iCloud.com and open your calendar there. I say most direct because your browser doesn't save any data locally. I know that's not true anymore these days, but will suffice for this explanation. Every change you make is directly saved on the server from where changes get pushed to your other devices. You probably have seen the demonstrations from Apple how events and contacts magically appear on other devices when iCloud is used. So I'm gonna skip these things and concentrate on things that can be confusing when using iCloud. To summarize iCloud for calendar and contacts are two different servers that you talk to. One is a CalDev server, the other one is a CardDev server. When you change something on one device, this device is going to upload its change to iCloud, where these changes get saved and pushed onto your other devices. In case you're editing the same account or event at the same time on two devices, you're going to be asked which changes are correct. This is called conflict resolving and you shouldn't see this anymore for calendars. In fact, in my tests I couldn't force a conflict iCloud really seems to be just working. In iCal we have a sectioned list of calendars. Up here it says iCloud. All calendars listed in these sections are located on Apple's servers. I'm going to explain in a second what that means for you, but below it also says subscriptions. These subscriptions can be all sorts of special calendars. The birthday calendar, week numbers, a weather forecast, etc. With iCloud, these subscriptions also get pushed to iCloud, so you see these subscriptions on your iPhone and iPad as well. Delete an event, calendar or subscription from a device and it's going to be deleted on your Mac and all other devices and the server as well. You can actually also create calendars only locally. Go to File, New Calendar or New Reminder List and you're going to see an option that says On My Mac. All events or reminders created in the local calendar are only kept locally and won't get pushed to iCloud and therefore won't get pushed onto your other devices. In fact, 
you can remove the iCloud account and won't lose any data and won't lose anything because all data is stored on the server. So if you want to get rid of a calendar, you have to make sure that you delete it from iCloud.com as well, in case you really want to make sure it's gone. Just removing it from your Mac or iPhone won't help. As soon as you sign in with your iCloud account, all calendars, contacts and other data will show up. The next thing I want to talk about are bookmarks, because they are handled the opposite way than contacts and calendars. Where contacts and calendars have their own server software, bookmarks haven't. Bookmarks are synced in the more traditional way data is synced. But iCloud still handles which changes are most current. I take the reading list as an example here. The most useful feature for bookmarks syncing is the reading list. Its most useful feature for me is getting open tabs from a Mac to the iPhone or from my iPhone to the Mac. Let's say I'm on my Mac here and want to read this article on my iPhone. You go to your Mac's reading list, add the article here to your reading list, then just go to your iPhone and wait for the page to appear in your reading list there. In my experience, this takes a bit longer than pushing calendar changes about, but iCloud overall is really fast. Another thing that really amazed me when I started using iCloud is PhotoStream. PhotoStream doesn't sync photos to or from devices. As the name implies, it's a stream of photos, a continuous flow of photos taken on multiple devices. I say amazed because PhotoStream removes the necessity of photos using Dropbox, because everything happens in the background. The downside though is that photos can't be removed from a photo stream. This means that photos in the stream will eat up some disk space, but will be removed after 1000 photos automatically. This is to ensure there's always enough disk space available on all your devices. All devices have 30 days to download new photos, and the only way to remove photos from your photo stream is go to iCloud.com and reset your photo stream. Let's see how this actually works. First I'm on my iPhone here and I'm now going to take a screenshot. That's it, we're done. Next I'm going to my Mac and open iPhoto or Aperture. After the iPhone has finished uploading, the picture will automatically appear in my photo stream here. Once they are here I can easily manage them, for example add them to an event locally or just reuse the screenshot in a chat window. Now we add a screenshot to our local iPhoto library. Just take a picture here from iPhoto and drag it to my events. It's then going to be uploaded to PhotoStream. It doesn't matter where you add any pictures because PhotoStream always uploads the last added pictures. Once they are added, PhotoStream will start uploading automatically and they will appear on both my iPhone and my iPad. Think of the photo stream of a place where you can juggle pictures around across all your devices. You can't delete photos from photo stream, but you can always re-upload old pictures just by dragging photos to photo stream. This feature unfortunately is not available on iOS yet. iCloud for documents and data is a bit different. Think of it as Dropbox on a per app basis. Every app now has its own Dropbox. Let me show you what I mean. I'm here in Goodreader on my iPad. Right at the top you can see an icon that says iCloud. Everything I move in there is going to be synced to other versions of Goodreader that have iCloud enabled. I'm now going to add two documents to this iCloud folder. After they've been added to the folder, the operating system starts uploading if the connection is safe to upload big files. This all happens in the background. So you can safely close the app and iOS will continue uploading. As I said during the introduction, iCloud is integrated on a system level. Once the upload has finished, these documents will be downloaded in Goodreader on my iPhone and I can read these documents. With documents and data, iCloud enables every app to have its own data in the cloud. When an app is iCloud enabled, a developer can choose what to upload or download using iCloud. This space is counting towards your iCloud storage. On OS X you can go to iCloud's new system preference pane where you can manage data stored on iCloud. 
Here you also see the documents just transferred and can delete documents individually or all at once to regain iCloud space. I hope this screencast made it much easier for you to understand how iCloud works. As you saw, iCloud is basically just like Dropbox. But compared to Dropbox, it is built into the operating system. There's no app you have to install, there's no settings you have to tweak, it's just there. iCloud also syncs documents on a per-app basis. This makes it clear how Dropbox is different from iCloud. A Dropbox is a place where you can put stuff into, a place you can go to and all your stuff is there. iCloud for documents is not visible, it's not a service, it's a function provided by the operating system. In the next screencast, we're going to take a look at other iCloud features. Thanks for watching.